Hey, hey, Ricardo here, and today we're going to see another cool automation, which is a custom uh, scraper built out directly within our table. So uh, let me show you how that works. Basically, what we have in our table is uh, we have uh, a table that is only related to this building. So within this uh, table here, you are uh, you just uh, build out the list and build out the different fields that you need uh, to do. Now, here there are a bunch of different possibilities that you can use. And um, those are Facebook groups, Slack groups, Twitter followers, Instagram followers, LinkedIn search and so on. So uh, we will see Twitter followers right now because uh, that is like the most simple one. And uh, what I will do right now is I will take a, a random profile uh, over here and then use uh, this uh, as an example. So here we have this profile. What we can do over here is we can put the URL of the profile, select the specific list type, and then what we do is we start and we launch this. So when we, when we launch this, then we will have uh, the part related to the custom scrapers, which is the following automation over here. This uh, requires a little bit of setup up front, but once you do that uh, once, uh, you don't need to check uh, everything constantly because uh, the system updates uh, um, automatically. So what we do here is obviously this is the first part to start the automation and get the list with all the information that we have, such as the name, the input URL and the list type. Then based on the list type, we have uh, different, uh, uh, different phantoms over here. There's the Twitter one, the Facebook group one, LinkedIn search and Slack. So here you can have, uh, um, you can have uh, whatever you feel like over here. Keep in mind there are some limits to uh, Phantom Buster, which is the tool that I'm using and I'm, I will also show you Phantom Buster in a second. But basically what we do here is we get the, the, uh, the specific phantom and then once we get the specific phantom, we do some modification to that phantom. We do some modification to the code of that phantom to uh, change the name of the output uh, to be record ID. And uh, uh, record ID is the identifier that Airtable uses and you will see why um, in a bit. And then we modify this uh, spreadsheet URL. Uh, the reason why we have uh, like four of them instead of one is that every single phantom has a different structure. Uh, like here, for example, there's the Facebook group one. And as you can see here, they ask for session cookie, group URL and uh, CSV name. Instead here, they ask for spreadsheet URL. So that is why those are different. So. What we do uh, then is we modify the phantom over here uh, with uh, the uh, the argument uh, because the argument is the only important part that we actually need to modify here and then we actually launch the phantom. So um, yeah, this is all great, but how does Phantom Buster work? What is the setup that you need to do on this side? So this is Phantom Buster. If uh, you are not familiar with the tool, uh, this is a scraper slash automation tool. It's been in the market, uh, I think, since forever, since I can remember, over five years probably. And uh, you have uh, uh, a bunch of different possibilities for automation. They can also do some uh, uh, generation, this scraping, all, 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 all everything. So um, what uh, we need to do over here is we need to build out the automation, the, the phantoms within Phantom Buster first, and this is pretty simple. So here, for example, we create a new phantom, we select the type of phantom that we want to create. So in this case, let's just use uh, Twitter followers. And then what we do over here is we put a random URL. So this is random URL that I have saved. Here, uh, we connect this to Twitter, and this is the only reason why we need to do this uh, uh, in, um, in a manual way, because uh, only because of the session cookie. This part can, actually can be automated, but uh, um, it's way easier to actually uh, build the session cookie, uh, add the session cookie once, and then update the session cookie by just clicking on a button. 
Then here we click on um, extract, and then as you can see here, there are some limits of the different uh, uh, profiles. Uh, this is why it's important to uh, go also through this and understand what are the limits so that you are not blocked by specific limits that you can have. So here, uh, as an example, they mentioned you can only scrape uh, 5,000 uh, 5, profiles uh, every two hours, uh, depending on how your account here is. And here, you can mention the number of followers to extract. So uh, this could change depending from account to account. Uh, at the moment, I haven't integrated anything that takes this into account, but this is definitely something that can be taken into account. Uh, to be extra safe, uh, to not have any kind of problems in the future. And then another thing here is the results file. So here, if you just want to name that, you can name Twitter followers and then click on save. So um, yeah, and here at the moment, you, you click on one, say so you click on save. So right now you will have the, the, the follower collector. And uh, what you can do is uh, uh, every follower correct uh, every phantom has an ID. Probably the ID is present somewhat here. So this is the ID. And you can use this ID uh, within this uh, part over here. So this is uh, the first part. And uh, another important component that I forgot about is uh, uh, the, in the advanced settings, there's this part related to webhooks. So there's a custom webhook URL that you can use over here. This is used so that while, uh, once the uh, phantom is finished, you can receive the notification and trigger another workflow. So also, I will show you what the other workflow looks like over here. So this is when the phantom actually finishes. So here we wait, uh, like when this is finished, first off, we do a little bit of filtering. So we make sure that we only extract uh, phantoms that actually have result data. Um, and then we get the, the CSV uh, from uh, Phantom Buster. We rename the CSV because uh, uh, the name uh, that we used at the beginning was uh, uh, the name um, of the ID. So this is difficult for you to understand, uh, um, to understand. so difficult for you to know uh, how is the actual name of uh, the Phantom. And we renamed that to the actual name that you put over here. So that is why we do that. Then, um, thanks to that, we get this lead list and then we upload the file to Google Drive and then add the lead list uh, directly to Airtable. So let me do a little bit of uh, uh, troubleshooting and showcase right now to see that everything has worked correctly. And uh, yeah, so um, here, as you can see, we had uh, the lead list output. So if we go over here, as you can see, we have the lead list. And in the lead list, we have all the information such as profile URL, uh, user name. Uh, keep in mind, the lead list changes depending on, um, depending on the type of file that you scrape. So in this case, we scraped uh, Twitter. And so we have uh, all this different Twitter information. I guess those are 5,000 profiles probably. So let me do a quick check. Uh, yeah, probably a little bit less, uh, I would have to check, but yeah, this is the actual, um, yeah, this is the actual lead list. And so in this way, it's way easier to, uh, to actually scrape profiles and do that directly within our table. I didn't add the profiles uh, directly to Airtable. Uh, this is not, uh, uh, yeah, this is only because uh, if you add uh, a lot of different uh, records within Airtable, you quickly encounter the limit to the, of Airtable, which is uh, uh, 50K rows uh, for, um, for the paid plan. And uh, I think it's 1K rows for the free plan. So uh, yeah, with that said, uh, I don't want to have everything within our table, uh, but uh, this can be definitely done. And I will show you also how to use your table as a clay-like clone in, in the future. So that's pretty much it for today. Uh, let me know if, uh, if this is interesting for you. If uh, you would like to build out the scraper, feel free to, to contact me and we can build this out also for your business. Bye.